all right today on williams adventures we are <clears throat> pardon me uh up here in the kitchen brewing potions and so i'm gonna taking kind of go over what i've done for and so you can actually see the steps in progress basically so i'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what i got going on all right so one of the first things I did was I printed out a potions list of all the basic potions that are in D&D right now from the base game. For example, I do have some like Storm King's Thunder and, you know, against the Giants. So, so there are some in here that aren't on the base game. Now, here's what my players managed to steal. As you can see, here's the price of them, the potions, and how many. So they stole quite a bit, totaling up to that much gold. So what I did was I went and printed out on 110 pound cardstock labels of different types and uh, fonts. Like that one's claws for animal friendship. Just to take in, you know, add some creative flair. And then when I, what I did was I scrounged around the house to take and see what bottles I had, as well as work. And I found some of the, some like these at work. And so what I did was I'm going to specify which type they are. Because like, for example, some of them only have one type. And then I went through and started collecting glass vases that we had. And so, like, this one will be the Potion of Invisibility. Just because, well, that's a really cool bottle. And like a Potion of Flying. It's the same as some others I have, but the bottle is blue. So I thought that'd be cool. Here's another one, a Potion of potion of Giant Strength. Just this really cool bottle. Now, I do have others, like this really big one, and several more back here as well as some jute cord. I'll be explaining what that's for later. I also bought corks of different sizes. Now, the small ones only fit like this bottle here and maybe a couple others. Otherwise, I had to go to a bigger uh, cork size, as you can see there. And then I got went and found some food coloring I had. This one I got from my mom. It's violet, so it's purple. Here's blue. And I think these are icing colors. I don't know. But that's what I'm using. And then when I was at Hobby Lobby buying the corks and the jute, I also came across this. And it is mica powder of different varieties. Like for example, here's like pumpkin orange. And it is a mica powder you add to fluids to give it a really cool look. I'm gonna skip right here considering I'm in the process. Oh, well, no. So what I did was I, over here, took that and this one and filled them full and Boiled them for a couple minutes, take out any impurities, basically. And then I got a big measuring cut glass like this, put 25 drops of red food coloring into it, and I got this beautiful red color. And then what I did was I would put 
light a bottle down here, put this in here, and pour the liquid in. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Well, oh, it's making a mess everywhere. I don't want to do that. But it comes out with this really cool color. Now, this is kind of settled. And yes, it is snowing here. It did snow here, but it came out with this really cool color. Once these cool, because it is still warm, then I will shake them up and you'll get the different swirling in there. Um, let me see if I can grab a cork real quick. Take and push this in here so it doesn't come out. And if you see, a really cool color in there. And yes, it's kind of orangish, but it's also, when you look at it, I don't know if you can see it here, there is a red hue to it. So it is pretty cool. And then what I did was I took some of the little ones, and this is just the straight red food coloring for a atypical potion of healing. And then what I did for the greater potions, I added salmon pink to it. This is kind of settled once again, but you can see the stuff in there is kind of floating around. I'm letting it cool. And then for the superior, once again, it's settled, but now I'm kind of waiting on them to cool down. I added pink gold. And then for the supreme, which is what these are, Since they are supreme, you know, it should be a slightly different color. I used, um, where is it? This pumpkin orange. And then what I'm going to do is once these have cooled off, I'm going to take the jute cord and wrap this here which is the um, threading for the actual cap that the, was originally attached to this. Around there, punch a hole in these so the it can hang from the cord. And then on the back, I'm going to write what it actually does. And then obviously take and put a wax seal on there so it doesn't leak. And here's what I've got so far. I only got two of these small ones, got four of these ones, got two of the superior, and of the supreme, I'm going to have like six of them. Because this is what they stole the most. As you can see here, potion of supreme healing. They stole 10, 20, 30 of them from a potion maker but that's what I got going on right now I'm going to be working on these and I'll probably give an update as to what they all look like when I'm done so I uh, I finished making all the potions up got them all dried down and cooled down and everything like that however in order to get the labels on them I need to take and get a hole punch and I don't have one. I think there's one at my dad's place. So I will be asking about that tomorrow. But at the moment, we're on hold before I can actually finish them off. All right, I want to finish this video off with what I, the progress I've made so far. So I'm going to flip the camera around and show you what I did. All right. I already did that one. Yes, sir, but I need some more water. 
Oh. So it, it's on the, the cooking and craft chick uh, YouTube channel is where I learned to do this. So I'll put a link down in the description. Anyway. So th I didn't want them to be perfect. But what I did, so as you can see here, I have my um little potion cards with the hole clipped out. And then I took some basically twine right there and I wrapped it around the bottle. As you can see here. And then just tied a simple knot in it and trimmed off the ends. So, when somebody goes to use this, it'll look like that. And this one has an orangish color, but the rest of them have a red color. And I put them all in a nice convenient carrying case. Here's a potion of greater healing. Same thing. And this is just a slightly different color. And for the potion of giant strength, what I did... I don't know if you can see them in there. There you go. Since we have uh, cats, I used their um, claw sheddings. I put them in there and it's basically just water. But it's a potion of storm giant strength. And according to D&D &D lore, in order to make a potion of giant strength, you have to have toenail clippings. Like water breathing is green. And uh, amazingly enough, a potion of divination is red. But another one I did was a potion of watchful rest, which is an, they say it's an amber color. I got this nice yellow color in there. But there you go, this is my box of potions that I will be debuting at my game on Saturday. You know, weather pending. Like this one is basically water and dawn dish detergent. This way it has little cloud bubbles in it. For a potion of flying. There you go. I have a nice little box of potions I can pass out to my players. If they don't drink them, I even for this one I even did a little tassel. Tied it on there because this one's a special one. But there you go. Figured you might enjoy this. Hopefully they'll enjoy this. Alright, well thank you for joining me today on William's Adventures. And let's go on an adventure and create something new.